What's going on, everyone? I picked today as a day to treat all my frames for wax moths. It's raining out. There's nothing really going on. So I figured why not treat my frames and I'll make a little video about it too to pass on whatever information I have on wax moth and treating for them. So of course we have pests and parasites and little inconveniences in beekeeping that we have to deal with. And wax moths are one of them. They they get into your frames of weaker hives and they'll, they, they make like all this webbing on the frame that you'll know you have wax moths and they have little wax moth larvae. If you ever do any ice fishing and you buy the, the, the grubs for ice fishing, they have butter worms, they also have the, the wax larvae, that's from wax, wax moths. That's what they look like. And they will destroy your frames. They eat all the wax, they'll actually bore into the wood because they're wood boring as well they'll destroy everything if your hives are really strong you have nothing to worry about the bees will take care of it but when the season winds down and you're storing all of your equipment you do have to treat your equipment i hear people say that the way they combat the wax moths and store them is by putting the frames in freezers that i imagine if you have like two or three hives that would probably work but I mean, you see all those boxes I have right now, and I still have probably about 20 more out in the yard. So that's a lot of frames. We're talking hundreds of frames. So there's storing it in a freezer is just not an option. Buying Tupperware bins and storing the frames in the Tupperware bins, not an option. I prefer to just store my frames where they belong in the, the super and the, the deep boxes. So, but before you do that, you have to proactively treat them so the wax moths don't take a hold. The way BT works is it attacks the larva. I believe it affects their digestion and the larva will just kind of starve out and not get the nutrients they need. I think it blocks the nutrients. I, I'm not that versed on the why, so I don't want to give too much uh, information as absolute information. You can maybe do a little research on your own. I'm not sure if the why is really that important or the how. So it looks like, it comes in bags like, this. it comes in many forms. You could buy it at your garden centers in spray form already, but you're gonna get it in like a little, um, like a little bottle that's similar to this. And it's not gonna be concentrate. It's, it's gonna be already mixed and ready to go. And this is not gonna go a very long way. This isn't BT, this is something for my gardening. Just using it as an example. So you, you have, you mix it up. I buy it like this. I'll put a link in the description of where I get this from online. It is expensive, but this will go a long way. I think I've had this for at least two years. There's an expiration date on it. You, you don't really have to worry too much about that. As long as you store it in a cool, dry place or, you know, in your house someplace and, you know, normal room temperature, even that's where I keep it. I've never had a problem with it. I've never had a batch fail. So, and you mix it up in a spray, a sprayer. This is what I use because I have so many frames. I use a one gallon sprayer. You put the water in. I put in, I use about two, two and a half teaspoons. I think that's more than enough. It's very hard to get an actual formula on how much you're supposed to use because when you buy it concentrate like that in the powder form, it's actually designed for big agriculture and like to put on like tractor sprayers and it's meant for acreage. So they actually measure it out for that application. So I've read on some forums that people use anywhere between one, three teaspoons. So I kind of went right in the middle there and I kind of go with two. It's uh, never failed. It's probably more than necessary because it is a living bacteria. So as long as it's there, it's going to kind of reproduce anyway. And uh, that's it. You just pull your frames out and you spray each frame. They will sometimes get moldy on you. So if you do it in the nicer weather, a lot of Folks will leave them outside, myself included. I'll leave the boxes outside upright to kind of dry in the sun a little bit before I put them away. But this time of year, I'm not going to have that opportunity. So I'm just going to store them just like I did these guys right here. These were already treated over here. These are the ones I'm going to treat today. So there, there's a little mold forming. I checked on them. And it's honestly, when you put them back on the hives, they'll take care of it in the spring. They'll clean any of that mold out. So I wouldn't be terribly concerned with the mold. As anything else, the bees fix it and they take care of it. So I'm going to give a, a quick demonstration on how it works. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'll just do a quick demo. All right, so I'm all set up and ready to go. 
I just basically stack my boxes up. I, I would normally do this outside. I'm, I'm using a, my new gimbal on my cell phone, so I'm just getting used to that. So I have my boxes all stacked. And I empty out the first box up here into a cardboard box down below. So this way I can now just spray those frames and put them back in the box and then take this box and move it aside. I, I just completely over explained that and not necessary. So let's get started. Got my little pump sprayer going. And you just pick up the frame. You don't need to get it soaked, but make sure you get good coverage. That one's done. Too. See, so that's, it's pretty quick. It's a pain in the neck. It's messy. I'm getting it all over the floor. Again, normally it would be done outside, but it's harmless. And I'll just grab a mop and I'll mop up my floor and it'll be nice and clean. So it has a little bit of an odor to it. It's not foul. It's just, it's actually very organic. It's got a, I kind of like the smell of it. So um, none of these frames, I kind of did a quick inspection. On. None of them have any uh, wax moth present on them. I was concerned about these because it's been a couple of weeks they've been sitting here, but the nights have been getting pretty cold and I normally keep them relatively sealed up. I, I store my boxes normally on top of an outer cover and then I put an outer cover on top to kind of, that's for, to keep mites out, obviously. So uh, I don't count on that to keep wax moths out though. I have had boxes in that configuration and the wax moths still got in there. It takes one moth to get in there to start their own little colony. And uh, that's it. If I went any further with this demonstration, I would literally be insulting everyone's intelligence. So um, that's it. Thanks for joining me. And I got to finish spraying about 200 frames. I'll see you guys next time.